All right, Wargaming enthusiasts, let's talk about hobby time and uh, some of the ways that we can explore getting the most out of what we have in the moment. What I mean by that is certainly over all the years that I've been enjoying Wargaming, there's always a, a lot of up and down, give and take. We find ourselves in different life situations. There have been times where I've literally had nothing but time to game. And even with that, admittedly, I spent way too much time um, gaming, right? But I had a lot of free time. I didn't have many obligations yet with family and school or work. And then there's been other times where it's just I've got family obligations. I've got some schooling going on. I've got work. Just it's a really, really busy time. And you're like three weeks just went by in a blink of an eye, and I, I haven't had a chance to play anything. And then for most of us, whatever that schedule is going to be, it, it, it kind of works out. Maybe you have one day a week or a couple of days a month that you're able to game. But in this podcast, what I wanted to push up was managing your time when you have none and, and to really draw focus on some of the other things we can do uh, to feel like we're connected to the community, to feel like we're making progress in whatever our gaming system is going to be. Warhammer 40,000, X-Wing Miniatures, Wings of Glory, Judge Dread Miniatures, Mordeheim. I mean, the systems I enjoy, Battletech, a couple of them are, are, are really obscure there, certainly. For me, gaming is a social interaction. I love painting, I love building, I love collecting, I love the narrative, I love big battles. But it's a chance to get together with some friends, roll some dice, see what's going to happen, see what's going to unfold, to quote Maximus, right? Are you not entertained? And I find it a great compliment compared to this kind of... 24-7 plugged in digital world where absolutely is nothing, nothing is real. You go to analog wargaming, it's it's real. We're picking up dice, we're moving miniatures around, we're, we're creating a narrative. But when that's not possible because that involves coming together with a player or a bunch of players and, and having the space to do it, that's where I feel like things need to shift where we can make progress in our hobby. We feel like we're moving ahead. Plus, we're getting a little relaxation in there, and, and we're getting those aspects that we enjoy. So I define wargaming not only not always in equal parts, depending on what's going on and, and what you personally enjoy, uh, but there's the modeling part, the building, the painting, the collecting, acquiring your miniatures, painting your miniatures, making your terrain. Uh, there's the actual playtime you with your opponent, playing games, rolling dice, and then there's kind of the narrative time where maybe you're reading up on the backstory of, of Warhammer 40,000, the Grimdark, or you're reading the Battletech books, or you're looking at lists and, and tactics on there. Maybe this is on YouTube, or you're reading on forums and, and blogs. And I'll put in a plug there for my blog underneath this podcast. This vlog is a link to my blog where we look at other systems, and I try to complement the podcasts that I push up try to build on on both and, and get that cross synergy on there. Reviewing your tactics, reviewing your lists, thinking about if I acquire these models and inject them into my list, how does that change? Those would be kind of the three aspects of the hobby. Now, most of my hobby is spent playing. I also spend time list building and, and certainly exploring different tactics. I love watching your YouTube channels, and I'm part of some really amazing Facebook gaming groups out there populated by a, a number of friends, some I've met in real life, some in virtual life, but I, I consider them my, my brothers in arms, right? I consider them my battle brothers out there. And the building and painting, I do on a steady basis. I'm, I rather play games. I love playing the games. But I realize we have to build and paint, and, and I do enjoy the progress in there, and there is a satisfaction. Uh, but compare that to m my other friend, he rarely plays 40K, maybe two or three games a year, but he is all about building and painting and modeling. And, and he has some amazing models and some amazing collections, have won numerous awards on there. So in this matrix, this, this three kind of sided pie, we're going to be attracted to different things. So if you find one area lacking, push the boundaries Make that progress in those other areas. So if you can't make it to your weekly game or you know, like, look, this is the summer with work, do or die. I'm going to be working every day, pushing every day, working like crazy. Well, I can't go in game. I can't take out 
two, three, four, five hours of the week to game. I will at some point. But on that off time, can I double, redouble my effort on building paint? So this way, when I am able to play, I show up at the club or the group, and I'm like, boom, an entire new lance, an entire new army, some new toys. And uh, guys are like, wait, what the heck just happened? Where'd this come from, right? Can you get momentum there? If you can't do that, can you watch some battle reports? And I watch battle reports not only to be, well, entertained, uh, but to get ideas. I, I try to step out of my local gaming culture, right? You play with a bunch of friends. You play with a group. You're Over time, it's, it's like you're becoming a, an entity, a life form in itself. Certain missions you like, certain ways of playing you like. It just becomes natural. Your player personalities, uh, while they're separate, they kind of merge. Whatever your gaming system is multiple systems, it becomes normal. When I watch battle reports, I get to see literally stuff on the other side of the world. Yes, I have a funny accent, right? But I get to see stuff on the other side of the world, how you're playing and what's local for your meta. And and before, you know, YouTube and um, a lot of great content, when did you really see a lot of this stuff? So it's a way that you can step out of your comfort zone and get some ideas. Um, it's also a great way for some of the longer battle reports, if I'm working right now, I'm working on Tyranids. I'm looking at some Tyranid options. I'm looking at some of my older armies, you know, thinking about things. I watch some Tyranid videos and I pause, you know, so if I see the action, what's going on, I'll pause it for a second and think, okay, if I was going against this Tyranid army, how would I stop it? Or how would I utilize it? it it's kind of like this, this pause for a moment in the decision tree and see how things play out. And I try to see uh, both the mistakes and what's worked well and what hasn't. Usually that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's where you're like laying in bed, it's late at night, you should be going to sleep, you're holding the iPhone up over your head, you're slowly nodding off, and you're like, if this thing falls on my head, it's going to like crack my nose or crack some teeth or something, right? But there, there's always a little bit of time to get that little bit of hobby in. And that's what I've aimed for over the years, to make consistent progress in this hobby, not only the social aspects, but just to keep myself a little bit sane in this insane digital world where nothing is real anymore, making that progress bit by bit. So if you find yourself in that situation, I'm right there with you. That's where I want to push out. Yes, playing games is important. Yes, we'd all rather be playing games but for those times that you aren't, especially if you're staring down a long period of time, right? Something happens and you're like, look, six months or, or longer, I'm, I'm going to be out. You know, I've got to take care of what I got to take care of. And you feel like you almost have to walk away. You know, sometimes the pain is, is so much where you feel like, look, I, if I'm not going to make it, I'm just going to push it away and I'm, I'm going to walk away from gaming, right? I don't have the time. Stay in the game. Shift it over a little bit. Even if you're so busy and you paint you know, a, a couple of space marines a week, that little progress, or you work on some terrain. Um, another time I was really, really busy working on stuff, I said, well, I'm in a pretty good place with my armies. I'm in a pretty good place with my collection. I'm, I'm watching some videos. I'm going to work on some terrain. As I go through my daily life, I'm going to check out the recycling bins. I'm going to check out the bits. And, and if I find interesting stuff, I'm going to make, I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it in a box. And when it gets to the top of the box, I'm going to spill it out and I'm going to work on making some terrain. And I did that for a couple of months. And then when life got back to normal and I started uh, getting back to gaming, it was like, hey, here you go. Look, I've got a terrain set in a box, ready to go, packs itself in and out, mat rolls up. Perfect. So, Keep that connection. Keep that connection to your hobby. Keep that connection to playing. Keep that connection to the community. And when you have a lot of time, drink deep, roll those dice, play it. And when we have less time, we do what we can.